Hello everyone, I'm Istvan Sep and I'm a graphic designer. I hope you know me already from my recent videos. Actually not very recent because I didn't do any live drawings for a couple of months now. I was quite busy with client work and everything and creating my courses for Udemy. You know, I have a lot of excuses. What I will do now, I will draw in Inkscape and what I usually do, I am creating an image uh, about for an hour long so I will explain what am I doing, not explaining all the tools and how to use Inkscape. I just go through an illustration this time, especially for Christmas because it's here in a few days. And uh, I will tell you uh, how I draw the characters, how I do the colors, what do I do for make it looking a bit 3D. That's the secret, it's called gradients. Okay, there's a lot of things I can tell. If you have any questions, if you go to the event page on Google+, Plus, you can ask there. So I can see it and answer in the live recording. Also, this video will be published on YouTube, of course. So let's go into drawing. I usually don't create sketches, as you know, or you maybe don't. Uh, this time I made a very, very simple sketch on paper. I will create a cat and a fox us this is what we like with my girlfriend cats and foxes if you want to see our work on facebook there is a cats and foxes page i will share the link on the description so what i do now i will make a cute cat and a cute fox building a snowman because this is the most winter and christmas stuff i can imagine although here in hungary budapest where i'm located now it's about zero, so there is no snow and uh, no snowman yet. I'm just using uh, simple shapes or the Bezier tool to create what I want. And See, I just get very, very basic stuff here. I will add the arm. It looks very robotic now, but this is how I this is how I usually work. What yeah, this is the fox. So what I usually do, I just check on my sketches. It's here next to me on the paper. It looks awful, but still it has more or less the idea of my composition. So it's two characters. And I'm not even showing you the sketch. Don't wait for that. <laughs> okay, I'm not scanning it or anything usually. I'm just looking it up and uh, decide how I'm going to proceed. So now I have to shapes very rough mm, this can have even a smaller body so both the characters are like i usually do very cartoonish very cute this is a good part because i can play with the composition and the proportion if you have any question as i said you can uh, you can ask and i try to answer Okay, let's check. Okay, no questions yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm just using the control key. So I'm holding control and I'm clicking on the notes to make them bendy. Which means by bendy, I simply mean that I'm creating from edges, sharp edges to curves. So this way, And this way I can add some curves to my characters. So the legs are not just straight. 
etc., etc. You know what I'm talking about. So this is how I made also the head of the kitten. I know they are now both of them red. It's like whatever color I like, I use on the spot because it's very easy just to select them and uh, change the color in Inkscape. So whatever is comfortable for you. I just started with red because that was the last color selected, but it can be anything. Also, I saved the project before. Use Control S and save as much as you can. In the Inkscape group on Facebook, we were just talking last week. We had a happy recovery. Someone lost the file. Inkscape is auto saving and it's hidden in somewhere in your Inkscape folder or in your, uh, what is it, in your document folder or in the project folder you are using. It's worth to check those places to search for your work because Inkscape might have done. Uh, What's it? An emergency save. But if it doesn't, because I don't know why, then it's good if you are having an, an emergency emergency save. And by that I mean set up auto save in the document properties or or in the Inkscape preferences, uh, which is Shift Control P, I think. And also you can you should save as much as you can with the fast hit on the Control S key. Okay, in the meanwhile, I'm also drawing the head of my little fox. He has a weird nose. I know that. I delete this node. Yep. I just double click sometimes to add some new nodes and I try to make the fox a bit short as well. If the bo both of the characters are in the same line, the fox is a bit taller. Okay. I will give them gloves anyway. But it's good just to have a gloves and was the boots but it's just good to shape the character this way. Also, this one needs an arm. It's good that in Inkscape you can just select an object, duplicate, and I have an arm already for the fox. Of course, uh, for the fox I wanted to make thinner, and longer looking. And the cat is here a bit chubbier. I merged the body, but before, just take them off the paper and I duplicate where I am now. I do this so I can go back to the previous versions anytime. If you are following my drawings, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm all the time duplicating what I have done already just to create another version. And when I'm not sure, I can go back. And this is great in Inkscape. This helps you so much develop your drawings because you don't lose things and it's not holding you back uh, in the creative process. I really, really like it. You just develop your drawing, but if you're not satisfied, you just go back. I think it's so easy. Okay, this is the little kitten. Okay, this one is not needed. Fine. 
Maybe I need bigger ears. Okay, and also for the fox, I want the same fluency in the body. The cat looks cute now. At least I like it. You can select nodes like this and you see the same arrows appear for transformation. And then you can use the transformation a bit smaller hand as well. Nice. And then a bit shorter legs for the Fox 2 maybe. All right. So now we have two characters. You can see already some changes from the previous one, and that's good. Okay. Both of them will have tails. To the cat, I will just give a Now it looks like Pikachu, but if I'm using control to click on the nodes, this looks more of a tail of a cat already. That's one. And to the fox, I want to big bushy tail, the same Pikachu style. As you see, I'm just using it very casually. I'm doing a polygon, so an object with a lot of edges, and then it doesn't matter because then I just clean it up with simple clicks. Is it good like this, or should I flip it? Now it looks like a square, no? Maybe I don't need this band in it. Or a much smoother one, yep. Yeah, like this it's good. So it has a bushier tail than a cat, or at least cats I know. Let's save. Okay, still no question. I hope you hear me, guys. And <laughs> that's why we don't have any questions. Okay, so... Is it good? Yeah. So, we have now these two figures. And why they are standing like this? Because they're gonna be a snowman in the middle. The snowman they are just building. So one of them is having the head in the head, hand. That's the fox will be. And the other one will put in the branches or stuff, you know, just to make a snowman. I'm using shift control C. It's the same thing as you go up here and do path and uh, what is it? Uh, object to path. When you are converting an object to a path, obviously. Is the same thing what I can do is I make a snowball you see what I did it's a circle but I made it a bit more flatter and I can say okay this is the snowman good so I'm already having a composition here and now I will add some color and some character to the figures a bit adding some character i mean i will give them color and i will give them eyes and you know things that they do little details so how we do an eye it's very simple you make two circles you see they are overlapping 
I switch to outline view with uh, control and five. And I just control star and I have already the eye of a cat. And I lift it. So it's more cartoony and I have the eyes already. Great. And I give her big irises. I will make it green, greenish, bluish, something. So this will be white, obviously, or with a dark uh, outline. Now it's visible. Okay. And the dark middle. I just duplicate it and put it in the middle. I duplicate it again, I make it white. And I put a shine on it. I group it up. This is how you do a crowd and I control D and I put set clip. So this is what happens. I have the original shape, I duplicated it and I used it on this group as a clip. I group it up again. I have one eye done. Okay, it's big. It's the Cyclops cat. Okay, not I just have to figure now I double click it I can go in into the clip and I can move the eyes so she looks actually normal okay No, I nudge the head a bit, so she seems like having fun and laughing and not just straight with a straight head. Okay. The cat is colored dark I make it lighter because it will be white on the end I just make it whiter so it's visible on this background too I may be no I need these outlines and I even make them thicker in stroke style yeah something like this if the if it's this thick I have to remove this inside Or what I can do, which is even easier. Duplicate and make my own stroke. And why it is good? Because I can also modify the shape. So triangle here, bend it a bit. So it has big eyes. I know it's not a kitten eye, it's not so 
cut, but it is cute at least. I'm thinking to make it looking happy, and by looking happy, I can make the eye in a different shape. So I just take an eye out. I mean, not like that, you know what I mean. But if someone is la laughing, the eyes are usually like a moon shape, like this. Mm -hmm. Just as a test, if I cover it up, how does it look? Mm. Come back to this. And I give the little kitten nose. I will make it pink. Okay, with a smile like this, it's already much happier. I'm just again bending the shapes a bit. I'm doing things symmetrical. We were talking about this with a friend yesterday that you are you can duplicate things and make them symmetrical uh, easily. Like this is what you also can do in Inkscape. It's so easy, but also it helps a lot if you after you made the duplicate you modify it a bit. So like in this case, these are not the same shape. You know what I mean? Like this is a bit shorter, this part. So it has a feeling that the head is bending and this part is a bit shorter than the other one. Okay, the kitten is right. The ears I have to work on here. Okay, let's check the fox. The fox I will make kind of an orange, of course. I will add the gradient to a body, so it will get darker to the bottom. Great. I send this to the back by pushing the end key. And now let's make the head of the fox. Forgot to add the little eyebrow for the cat to make it even more girly. You're not as thick. Great. And I will
I remove these. Okay, now it looks weird. And I try to create the mouth of the fox. So this is the mouth, he is smiling. And he will get a white teeth. Okay, what I will do here is I will cut off the eye, like the big nose is covering it. So I, although the nose is not continuing, it seems it is, and I have to make it a little bit shorter. I don't like it that that long. Okay, it's getting there, it's getting there, and same thing I do. Great. Okay, mm, I have to work on the characters a bit, but it's okay, not as bad. Mm, I remove the gradient on this one, I like it like this. Good, so I have a fox and I have the cat already. And these are the eyebrows and his eyebrows I will leave scurrier what I will also do is I put the eyes Okay, we started from this and this is how we, where we are now. I made a mistake. I didn't select everything while I was moving them. Mm, okay. This is good. Give a little hair to the cat too.
and uh, with control plus I'm doing this that I'm using uh, it's actually path union so what I'm doing is with control plus I just click on it easily So with the control plus I merge objects together and to create the hair like this that it's a part of the object and now I give a little hat to cat so it's control clicking making it bendy fluffy looking how I will do that is I will spray I will spray but not scatter So now I get into a little detail. What I did now, I did a little sphere. I selected it and I used the spray tool. The spray tool is good for simple objects to create more complex stuff. So I don't like it when people create an object like a complex, like I would create this whole cat stuff and make use the spray tool to make I don't know whole skin with whole scene with cats with their cats. But the thing is that if you use it like this. With simple objects you can make a little fluffy head very very easily okay and so like this Okay, something like this. The cat is getting where I want it, and now I'm giving here her a little uh, gloves. Obviously red. What else? I make it. I just duplicated the, uh, the original hand, and I used path difference. And now I will. It looks like oven mittens, I know, but mittens are good for great characters with no five fingers. It's also good for me, I don't have to draw fingers and hands and everything, I just have fun with my creature. I just take care that it's actually covering the hand. It does more or less. I will finish the arm as well, and what first I give a scarf to the fox, so he also has some fun himself. Just checking how. Okay, this looks better. I will give glasses to the fox because I am wearing glasses. So why I'm drawing a cat and cats and foxes is what I said. Like we like cats and foxes, but it's also because 
I look like a fox more or less and I like to make jokes so my girlfriend is calling me a fox and I she is really like a lazy kitten sorry <laughs> So this is how I make usually glasses. If you were looking for a tutorial how to make glasses, this is it. Group it up. Turn it in the head. And move this one closer so this one will be shorter. Also move this one closer. Is it? No, this one closer. good that's nice make it darker a bit maybe not and uh, what I will also do I will use the same clip but only if it's there try so I'm actually covering it up so no clip you needed for this eye so I actually built the nose in front of it after all not as elegant as a clip would do uh, because now if I want to change the color of the fox I have to take care about this little part which is not obvious and not visible but what it gives me is it's a simple covering to create the glass and uh, the so it's helps me covering the glass and the eye on the other side of the big big nose of his okay let's give a little inside for the ears a bit more brown I'm using the color picker now to match some colors for myself I really like this tool in Inkscape how you do it is simply you are holding the mouse button while you are picking a color and that's it you mix colors then done I don't even need it there because that's like the back of it oh, but I can make one thing like a little shadow no it's not like that And give also gloves to the fox. Now I do it differently. Still, it's simple. I just drew a simple shape. Control click. And then this one I can remove. I don't need that. No one will check it, no one will actually see it. 
and I remove this node. And he will have a scarf. At this point, it's good to group the head together so it's not falling apart. And I put it in the front so it is um, in front of the scarf. That's good. And some detail to the scarf control clicking again duplicate so it already seems like a bit fold and now my favorite part It's not uh, Edward Scissorhand, this is the end of the scarf. I did it the same way I did the tails. And what I do also, I did this thing is here. So the... This looks a very cucumberish. Good. And I put it behind, make it a bit bigger. other side of the scarf just falling here and I will use the same gradient and put it behind and yes The scarf can be a bit bigger, like on every detail. Except here, so I don't have to confuse more. And that's good. And this one, I flip it a bit. So I have the fox, I have the kitten, the head of the kitten is now huge compared to the head of the fox, if I look at it in a small scale, so what I do, I again make it a bit bigger, you see, it's like if they kiss, Jesus Christ, <laughs> they are, yeah, the size is different. Okay, (laughs) 
nice so I'm now here I can let's just move on and group up the whole stuff group up the kitten group up the fox I will work on them more because you know grouping doesn't mean that you're finished it's just let's work a bit more on the composition stuff like this like make them a bit closer and it's easy because I can just select them with one click and I can work on the yeah I can work on the details I really want to like for example this head thing seems too big and too low that's good I make the whole fox a bit higher that's perfect and the cat can come in a bit more now I can group it uh, out so her leg is behind the ball mm, this is what I like in Inkscape I, oh, you see I'm not using layers but what I do I'm sending object uh, up and down so backwards and forwards compared to each other so like cutting our papers and putting it on each other so I'm selecting the hand now and I put it in the front so the cat is actually building the snowman while she's standing next to it and her leg and the, like the fox's head is partly hidden so even like this they are building you see it's much more compact it's easier to the eye and why I'm doing this because if this is my Christmas drawing I can make it I usually like to make give a background to my drawings by putting them in a circle maybe I will do it this time maybe I won't the point is that I can give it a dark background like it's a starry, starry night or something like that mm. no it's and thank you very much for watching me for 50 minutes doing this it's not much longer and I'm done I promise I will usually my drawings takes like uh, the live drawing takes about an hour and I finish it or not finish it in this time it's no problem really uh, because I finish in my time later on but you will see in the video how to create this what I actually just did and that's the point so we all learn from it it's more okay so it's not a perfect circle let's make the snowman white let's make the cat white okay this is what I'm interested in how much she will disappear because the snowman and the cat how do they relate to each other the fox doesn't care because he is orange and happy but what happens to the cat on this white background because of the snowman he, she is disappearing so what I do I make the snowman a bit darker kind of a blue mm, a bit lighter yeah put it in front and I make this part white again you will see what I'm doing again here I put this blue resize make it white so this gives a bit of shadow on the snowman and I will do the same with this thing with the snow I make it white
something like this okay good i like it that some parts are out of the picture and some parts are in in the circle that's okay that's good so you see it's almost white it's a light blue and it's still giving some okay and the fox can okay come apart as well and put the hand of it in the front and this part of the scar as well so it's a lot of work to align objects So this is already a shadow on the snowman. I can make it a bit bigger because the ball is small, so it doesn't have much shadow on it. Okay, and if the snowman has shadow, then I have to give shadow to the characters as well. How I do that? the lazy way and the lazy way is a lot of times the smart way is i'm using this dark gray okay this will be my shadow color on the cat i duplicated the shape of the cat i used the dark color that's perfect i duplicate it again Now it's perfect. Forgot to duplicate. But this is what I have now. I have a very basic uh, shadow on the cat. I do the same with the tail. Duplicate, duplicate again. Maybe it's too hard of a shadow. Okay, this is very simple, that's for sure. And I remove parts I don't need. For example, here at the ear, I have to fix it. You see, it's not matching. And here on the hair, I just remove it completely. So I don't uh, use that shadow but if the light is coming from the top from around here as seen on the cat on the head then the hair is looking a bit like this it has a shadow here on the bottom this is also helping me defining the shape of the head These are the little details which are almost invisible but give so much to a drawing. And this hand disappeared. No problem. Put it under. And I use it as a shadow over the body. Yes, that's good. And I have the same issue here, that these things are not perfectly working. Okay, something like this. So even the leg of the cat is visible now better. And I will move this one in. 
good. I see Ramona has a Ramon has a question. Finally, last five minutes, and I see a question popping up. Uh, if I'm preparing this, I'm showing you how to prepare it for a print. Um, I'm not gonna do that now. Sorry. Like, what I would do, but I can tell you what I would do when it would be for a print. Uh, just a few tips from me. I'm working with printers now on not the or not the proper big print companies which need CMYK colors and you know the CM cyan magenta yellow black combination which Inkscape is not really good for because although it has CMYK it cannot export properly for it but what it can, what you can do uh, with little print shops who are printing digital RGB you can give them a very high resolution uh, PNG from Inkscape and this is what I do a lot of times and they are very satisfied with it to be honest so this is how this is the only thing i do for preparing for print and the other thing i do which helps me a lot with printing is i try not to if i know it will be for print now i'm using also some transparency but not much so most of my colors are most of my objects are full color because for printing i also a lot of times i'm offering uh For printing, I'm offering a lot of times a PDF and transparency in the Inkscape PDF is not working very good. And that's what I'm taking care of, not making it transparent. What I'm doing now is the end of the tail of the fox. I'm not sure if it's visible, if it's visible or not. So I make it from gray going to white. Mm. Maybe it seems that the tail is cut off and maybe I can make it this big then. No, I like it being smaller. I like it that it's tight. Also, I'm not very good in the technical parts of Inkscape. I'm an illustrator and designer, so I'm using it as so. And in the last 10 years, I made a lot of websites and, and icons and uh, um, logos with Inkscape. So not especially for print. If I want something to print for sure from Inkscape, so it will look good and I, they need the ProScript uh, PS file and EPS properly something, I'm using Scribus. So I already said it in the Inkscape group a couple of times. I'm using Scribus for that. I have the SVG, I import it into Scribus and I export it there. Okay, so what I do now is I like the bottom color, but I don't like this one. Could be a grayer, darker blue. Okay, I think it's cute. If you bear with me for, for two more minutes, I will try to add some light to the head of the fox. You see, this is what I said. If I use this, I have to make it the same color. Why well, I did this, it's like this light is coming from the top for the fox. And I can do the same here with a simple circle.
So I'm creating shadows, deleting parts, etc. This helps a lot to create and give some depth for the drawing, so make it 3D looking. I just gave, gave a, sh uh, a light here on the tail, and that's working. Okay. What I miss from this wintry picture is I group it up, and just for the fun of it, I add some snow. Scale good, scatter good. A lot of snow, with okay. Even smaller snow. And I just snow it up. I know it's orange. I just do it because I want to see what I'm doing. Group them, make them white, and I give them a little bit of blur. It's a bit too much blur. And these will be the snow in the background. And go into the group and put it there. And I duplicate it, take off the blur. I just duplicate it because I don't want to make any more. No one will notice these are duplicated. And that's it. And I use them as the snow in the front. And I give a very tiny blur. Okay, tinier than that. With the cat being white, it's maybe smart to play with the snowflakes. So they are more on the red part and less on the white part. So this was me, uh, more than 50 minutes. This was my uh, Inkscape drawing. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a lot from it. I hope you, just like me, you noticed that there is no side on the glasses of the fox. Here, solved. And if you want to learn me, uh, learn more about Inkscape from me, you can check out my Facebook page. You should join for sure to the Inkscape group on Google Plus and on Facebook. If you didn't so, didn't uh, do it so, do it now. And between the holidays, have some time for yourself and learn some Inkscape. And if you want to follow my courses, go check them out at udemy.com. I'm explaining everything I know about Inkscape. And um, I will take care about it that as a little holiday gift, I give some promo code in the description of the video. So happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and have some rest, be with your family, and learn some Inkscape. Boldo Karajan. Goodbye.